So this is um, a short demonstration of how to install the MOS testing tool onto a Windows machine. Um, obviously, the, the first thing we need to do is actually get hold of the testing tool and, um, and the installation instructions. So if we Google for the AMWA MOS testing tool, we get a couple of hits. The first one of these is the GitHub repository, uh, which is where the testing tool has been developed. It's probably not the best place as an end user to get hold of the testing tool and instructions. It's better to go for the spec.amwa.tv link here, um, as this has a rendered version of the documentation and also includes a link to a downloadable zip of the MMOS testing tool. So as, as part of the, uh, the documentation, uh, we have some installation instructions for how to install the testing tool locally, as well as using Docker. So in this demonstration, I'll, I'll go through the local installation. There are some prerequisites that need to be installed before installing the testing tool. Uh, we need uh, Python 3.6 or higher and Git installed. And then there are these four requirements here which uh, depend on what you want to do with the testing tool. So these top three libraries uh, are necessary if you're doing BCP 00301 transport layer security testing. And this final library here is necessary if you're doing ISO 5 SDP testing. But if you just wanna get up and running with a minimal install of the testing tool, Python and Git should be all you need. Okay, so if I open a command prompt, um, the first thing I'm gonna do is make sure that I have versions of Python and Git installed. Um, so if you don't have those already, be sure to install them. We'll also make sure uh, we've got the latest version of pip installed um, as per the installation instructions. Um, pip is installed as part of uh, a standard Python install. Um, so you probably do have the, an up-to-date version that it's worth upgrading anyway. So the next thing I'll do is download the testing tool by clicking this link, and this will download a, a zip of the latest version of the testing tool. So I'm gonna extract that to my D drive. Okay, so um, once that's extracted to my D drive, um, so if I navigate into uh, the NMOS testing master directory that's just been unzipped, um, and then I can go and look at the installation instructions and carry on. So um, the next thing we need to do um, after navigating into the NMOS um, testing master directory is install the Python requirements for the uh, NMOS testing project. So this will download and install any Python libraries that are needed by the testing tool. Um, so once you've done that, we can run up the tool. So you do that just by running uh, Python and then uh, the NMOS test Python scripts. So we can now browse to the testing tool using our, um, our web browser. Um, so going to localhost port 5000, and here we see the testing tool um, with a drop-down list on it containing all the test suites for the different MOS specifications. If um, we're wanting to run the MOS controller tests, then we also need to run up a testing facade to help us with those tests. So we can do that by running up a separate command window in the MOS testing facade um, in the uh, MOS testing master directory and running the MOS testing facade Python script. So this will run up a separate application, uh, which by default runs on localhost port 5001. There we go. So now uh, the tool is installed. Um, one thing that's worth mentioning actually is the configuration options of the, the testing tool. So the configuration file can be found in the NMOS testing directory and it's called config.py. 
So if we open this, we can see configuration parameters that can be overridden if needed. By and large, uh, you probably don't want to change these, but if you do want to change a particular parameter, then you need to create your own user config.py file. So um, we've given an example uh, file called user config.example.py. So um, all you need to do is make a copy of this, um, rename it to uh, user config.py. So let's just do that. And then we can override parameters um, inside this file if we just open that up. So uh, one of the gotchas um, with the user config.py is that when we're overriding the declarations in config.py, uh, we need to make sure there's a, a config um, value there. So what I'm doing here is I'm just taking um, one of the um, one of the, the parameters from config.py, the DNSSD mode, and then I've prepended it with config dot so that um, it can be overridden. Um, by the testing tool. Um, for the testing tool to be able to pick up these changes, uh, you, you'll need to sort of stop and restart the testing tool. So, um, so just do that, stop it, restart it, and then that will pick up the, the latest configuration with the overrides in the user config.py. Okay, so that's the testing tool. I'm going to hand over to Gareth now. Hello, everybody. Um, so I'm going to go over some of the same ground as um, Jonathan. Um, I'm going to talk about um, installing the MOS testing tool, but using the, um, the Docker um, container, uh, and I'll install on a Linux host just to, to give you a different perspective. Um, there are possibilities to both use use both techniques on on any platform but there are a few a few gotchas so we're going to show these two ways of doing things and then uh, when I've kind of shown the install I think I'll I'll go on and I'll do the uh, run through a quick test of how to use it to test a node um, before I hand back to Jonathan to talk about um, the controller testing. So we're going to show one of the ways you can install the MOS testing tool on a Linux host and make it available on your network. So we start at the website, specs.amwa.tv forward slash MOS testing. Um, the documentation here leads with how to get the tool installed, as Jonathan said, and you've got two choices, installing locally from a zip archive and making sure you have the few external dependencies and prerequisites that Jonathan mentioned, or installing the tool as a Docker container, which comes with everything included. If Docker is installed, one command is enough to fetch the NMOS testing tool image. That's that Docker pull command there. And then we'll use the run command to deploy the tool so it can be accessed outside the local machine um, by making sure we start it with host networking. OK, so this is the Linux host where I'm going to run the NMOS testing tool. So we first check Docker's installed, and then let's uh, fetch the Docker image. In this case, this shows we're already up to date. If this were the first time, it would take about a minute to fetch the image from Docker Hub. Right, let's uh, run it. That's it. So it's running, and we can check that in the browser, same as we did earlier. The testing tool runs on port 5000 by default. So there that is. And um, the Docker container also launches the controller testing facade automatically if you're interested in testing an NMOS controller too. So as Jonathan said, by default, that's on port 5001. Now that we've got the testing tool installed, uh, I'll start up an NMOS node on a different machine and show how we can test it. I'm going to run a software NMOS node, but I'm not going to run it on that host. I'm going to run it a node on my um, Jetson that I've got sat on my network. I've got the open source <laughs> NMOS, NMOS CPP node here, so we're going to run that. But first, to work with the default setup of the testing tool, I've just made one important change to the NMOS CPP node config file to force it to use MDNS discovery. We'll do that by setting the domain here to local. Now we can run the node.
Notice that this node hasn't discovered a registry to connect to. If you do have a registry on the same network segment as the node under test, that's likely to interfere with the operation of the testing tool, which is why we recommend testing in an isolated network. Back in the browser, first, we want to test the basic functionality of the node. So we choose the ISO4 node API test suite. We enter the host name or IP address of the node and its API port. And then start the test suite. This can take a little while to run, about a minute for this particular test suite. The testing tool is making API calls and checking the responses from the node under test. The testing tool also includes several mock NMOS services. For this test suite, the testing tool starts a mock NMOS registry, in fact, more than one, so that it can test the node's interaction with the registration API. While the test suite is running, we can see the node discovering and using the mock registry in its log. When the test suite is complete, the results are shown in a table and are characterized with a pass, warning, or fail. Not all warnings are important though. There are some disabled tests here because the testing tool isn't configured to test secure APIs by default. And as I already mentioned, we're starting off by testing multicast DNS service discovery, so the unicast tests don't apply. The one fail reported here in my results is because I used the host name to run the test suite rather than the IP address. The reason for the failure is shown in the results, and in this case, I'm happy because I know this is just a configuration option of either the node or the testing tool that I could change and pass. More advanced configuration options for the testing tool are introduced in the documentation, along with some advice on how to test um, particular scenarios there. Okay, um, Jonathan, do you wanna um, show how you test the controllers? So I'm here, I'm just gonna demonstrate um, how to use the NMOS testing tool to test uh, an NMOS controller. So in this demonstration, I'm going to use uh, Riedel's NMOS Explorer to, um, to be the, the NMOS controller under test. And I've opened two command prompts in my NMOS testing tool directory. Uh, I'm going to start the testing tool in one command prompt. And I'm going to start the, um, the testing facade in the, the other control prompt. So as, as we sort of said a few times, um, the testing tool will run up by default on port 5000 and the testing facade um, on port 5001. So you can see on port 5000, the MLS testing tool, and there's the testing facade. So from the drop-down list, um, I'm going to select the ISO4 controller tests. And before starting the test, we need to configure the location of the testing facade, which we know is on localhost uh, on port 5001. Um, the version of the testing facade API is version 1, which is the only version available at the moment. In the query API configuration, we can choose which version of the query API the MOS controller under test will be using. We can then select all tests and click the run button. So then we browse to the testing facade um, and it might take a few moments for it to, to kind of get warmed up, but this will then um, give us some instructions that we need to follow. So the first thing is a pre-test message. So this gives us some information about how to configure our controller to be able to use the mock ISO4 reference registry that's being run as part of the NMOS testing tool. So to begin with, we're going to statically configure the location of the mock registry with the controller. Um, so what we do is we copy the IP address um, and the port over to the, um, the Regal static configuration. So now we're connected and we can see we've got a single node uh, with a set of devices that include senders and receivers. So these are all, all mock um, devices being uh, run up by the testing tool. So if we click next, that will take us to the, the first test in the test suite. So the first test is using the controller to browse the senders and receivers in the mock registry in order to test that the query API is being exercised correctly. So we can see um, in the Regal Explorer that um, is created subscriptions on the registry to browse senders and receivers, uh, which will have been logged by the testing tool in the background. So we can just click next and move to the next test. 
So here we're being asked to browse the senders in the registry and select in the testing facade the ones that we can see. So we can see Waters, Mason and Barrett. So we just go and check those in the testing facade. And once we've done that, we click Submit. And so this test um, is about discovering the receivers. So uh, again, we look at the testing facade and then we just select the ones that we can see um, on the testing facade's UI and click Submit. So this test puts a sender offline and then back online. So when we click Next, one of the senders will disappear. Um, so if we do that, we'll see that uh, Waters is still there and Mason is still there. Um, but Barrett is the one that's disappeared. So we select that. And then at a random point now in the next 60 seconds, that sender will come back online. So if we click next too early before the senders come back online, then we'll fail the test. If we wait for longer than 30 seconds after the senders come back online, we'll also fail the test. So you can see, um, we sort of patiently watch. We'll see when the sender comes back online. There it is. So we click next and move to the next um, to, to the next test, which in fact is the end of the test suite. Um, so we can see the, all the tests that have passed, um, apart from test one, uh, which was disabled because we weren't running the testing tool in Unicast DNS SD mode. Um, so if you do want to test that your controller can discover the mock registry using Unicast DNS SD, you'll need to do a couple of things. So um, the first thing you'll need to do is to modify that user config.py that you would have created earlier um, and change the, um, change the value of the DNSSD mode parameter from multicast to unicast. So we'll do that. And now we need to restart the, um, the MOS testing tool. But to, to do that successfully, uh, we'll now need to run this command prompt as administrator in order to allow the, the testing tool to run up its own DNS server. Okay, so we'll do that. And yeah, so now we have the testing tool running with its own DNS server. So we'll go back to the testing tool. Um, this time I'm just gonna select one of the tests to run, uh, which is the, the Unicast DNS SD test. Um, and if I go to the testing facade, uh, we'll see that the, the pre-test message um, has, is slightly different this time. So now as well as telling us how we can statically configure the mock registry, it's also telling us what we need to do if you want to find the registry using Unicast DNS SD. So what we need to do is to, to change the configuration of our Windows machine to alter the DNS, DNS server that it's using. So what I'm going to do is I'll copy the IP address um, in, from the testing facade into my um, DNS settings for my Ethernet adapter. Okay. So then in Regal Explorer, uh, I need to make sure that the search domain has been set to testsuite.mmos.tv, which is sort of shown there in the, the testing facade. And then when we switch the Regal Explorer on, it now automatically discovers that mock registry. And that's logged by the DNS server running by the testing tool. So actually, we just need to click next, which will take us um, to the end of the test suite. Um, and then if we go and look at the test results, we can see that we've now passed that test. And so very quickly, we'll just run through the ISO 5 controller tests. Um, So again, we're using DNSSD to discover the registry. So um, 
and then we move to the first test of the test suite. So in this test, we're being asked to identify receivers that are controllable using ISO 5. Um, in Regal Explorer, those receivers have a connection symbol next to them. So you can see that Burn and Baloo have those and we click um, select them and click Submit to move to the next test. Um, this is asking us to perform an immediate activation between Andrews and Burn. So we go to Regal Explorer and we do that. And then we can click Next. Next test is removing a connection between Chambers and Baloo. So in Real Explorer, we can do that and then click Next. And this is the final test asking us uh, which of the receivers has been activated in the background. And so we can see that Burn has been activated. So we select um, Burn and move on. It's now asking us which sender is connected to Burn. So in Regal Explorer, we can find the connected sender ID by looking at the transport parameters. Um, and in the testing facade, um, if we look at the testing facade, that you can see that as well as the name of the sender, um, we've also got um, the sender ID in there as well. So we can um, hopefully easily work out which sender is actually being connected to. So you can see it's Gregory. So we can select that one and click submit. And um, it's similar to the test where we waited for the sender to come back online uh, in the ISO 4 tests. And this test is, is waiting for the connection to burn to be removed in the background. Um, and this will happen within the next 60 seconds. So if we click next before the connection is removed, we'll fail the tests. Um, if we wait for more than 30 seconds after it's been removed, and click next, it will, it will also fail the test. So we just have to wait to see it. it's gone. It's just gone then. So we can click submit. And then that's the end of the test suite. You can see that we have passed all of those tests. So uh, yeah, a bit of a whistle stop tour there through the, um, the, the those test suites. So apologies if it went very quickly.